Hey, uh, so I'm Luke, and I'm gonna talk to you about how to build user interfaces without React, but with React. Uh, so I'm Luke, I work at JP Morgan during the day. Um, I also am on the core team for Inferno, which is a lightweight React-like library, which is quicker. Um, <laughs> you'll find me on Twitter at Sheard Luke or everywhere else at Luke Sheard. Um, so I think we all agree that like building UIs has been really hard, and that's why we have React. We've got libraries like Inferno, React, Angular, Preact, Vue, Backbone, Ember, and the one that kind of caught my eye was Polymer because whilst all of the libraries above that kind of have their own way of abstracting the DOM, Polymer kind of builds on using the DOM. That's kind of what JSX is about, and it's about what all of those libraries are kind of about, is making build, uh, building UIs a bit easier. But why don't we still use the DOM? Like, why do we have all of these tools? Well, uh, the DOM sucks, right? That's why. The APIs are not consistent, uh, browser support is different for kind of different things, and it's really hard, it's pretty imperative, um, and the kind of best practices now are kind of moving towards uh, kind of functional programming. Well, what about web components? This is kind of the new API that uh, is kind of coming out, there's better browser support now. Um, most of the modern browsers support it, maybe with one or two polyfills, but it's getting there. Well, the kind of consensus is that maybe that doesn't solve the problem completely. It's still using the DOM, it's still using all those APIs. And, well, we've got all those libraries that do it all for us. But why can't we just take web components, which is just simple HTML that you can serve without a Webpack config, without rendering your app.js, building all of those bundles. Why not just send two kilobytes of string down from your server and have the DOM kind of do all of the magic for you, rather than using all these libraries. If you look at React docs, you can see that, well, they teach you how to kind of do this. You can create a new prototype, register your element, and kind of do all of this attached callback to kind of secretly render stuff. Um, and this is kind of something that I've been thinking about, is what if we just take all of the power that React has, um, although it might be kind of a larger library, or use something like Preact, make a very small kind of bundle JS uh, use all of your small React components that do the kind of component hierarchy like the DOM, but have many more features than just inputs or divs or spans, and just use web components to render them. We can create our, create our X search, have a very simple small component that we can kind of render down from the server, have React take over and do all of the complicated stuff, and end up building components which work in any of those libraries that I listed, which is great for large teams that work on kind of big applications that don't use necessarily really React or Angular. And actually, the code to kind of do this is very simple. This is the, my first kind of naive implementation of it all, is literally just uh, taking React, taking React DOM, having a function that takes in a component and just uh, create a class that extends HTML element. And this kind of works. Um, it is obviously not the kind of most impressive thing to do. Um, but you can kind of build on this, and you can eventually use uh, the event listeners by overriding HTML element. Uh, and there are a couple of other callbacks that you can use. Um, and I kind of have a demo of how this can end up working. Uh, I think it's, so try and live demo. So all of this, this is a very simple page that is literally just uh, some, when you send it down from the server, it literally just looks like this. It's maybe two kilobytes coming down from the server, um, and it's a drop down that renders with React that's just, could be used anywhere, it could be used in Angular or anything. And we can add event listeners to add some options. And you can see React just takes over and handles it. And then we can uh, put, in some, put in some options. And then perhaps un under the hood behind these functions, add an event listener that checks that when I change, I'm just selecting something. So, oh, yeah. 
So with all of that, we've kind of got a very easy way to render kind of cross, like cross framework applications um, that you can use anywhere, not just in React, um, but uses the power of React and uses the power of JSX to kind of build really component-wise like interactive features. Thanks. Any any questions? Nope. Over here. Okay. Hello, thank you. Can you do the demo again, but zoom in, please? Uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, Okay. Um, just refresh. Okay. Uh, let's. Okay. So, all I'm sending down is this little kind of HTML string with my little bundle that I made, just as an example. Um, and what this does is React's taken over, and it's rendered inside of here. You can see a React root uh, with this is just React select that I use for a simple demo. Um, so you can see it's a React root, it's got some divs and spans that it's rendered. It's got a drop down. Um, and then I've just added in my bundle in here, I've taken this button, I've just used the native DOM APIs uh, to add event listeners and kind of can take over that attributes um, to add some options to the list. And then uh, I can add another event listener, which is what part two is doing. Uh, down here, so I've just called this pre-prepared function. Um, and then as I select an option, it's kind of taken control, changed the value on here, and shown me what I selected down there. So that's kind of the demo a bit zoomed in. <laughs> any, any more questions? Yep. Thanks very much, Lee. Cheers.